Live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering AWS Public Sector Summit. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Welcome back everyone, you are watching theCUBE and we are here in our nation's capital at the AWS Public Sector Summit. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, hosting alongside John Furrier. We are joining CUBE alum, Doug Van Dyke, CEO of Inquisit, to our show. Thanks so much for coming back on. Well, thank you for having me back, it's good to be here. So as I said, you're a CUBE alum, you're also an Amazon alum, and there's a story there, so. Sure, well I'll just do a, a quick rehash of last year. So, I started uh, at AWS in 2012 with the federal business, helped the federal business grow, started the AWS nonprofit vertical, was invited by John and, and Stu last year to be on theCUBE. Uh, the video was, was a great discussion, the video was seen by some of our best partners, and Inquisit, who happens to be one of the best partners that I had in public sector, um, we started some discussions, and uh, later I was hired to be the CEO. So, John, thank you. <laughs> I, I didn't know this was going to be a career opportunity yeah, for me last year. I wish I could take credit year. for it. You did, you're the one who's got the job, so you well, go through the interviews. Well, we're glad to help. Absolutely appreciate it's all it. the community, great to have you on. Good, um, thank you, thank you for having me back. you've been with Therese, you've known Therese for many, many years. Microsoft, the public sector game is certainly on fire. You got Andy Jassy on the fireside chat. Kind of bring in, you can see the frustrations, like hey, we got problems, and he's, yeah, I know I've known Andy for many, many years, for him to be that animated with his opinion means that it's critical, more, and more than ever now. Where is public sector opportunity right now? Because it seems to be clouds validated. Are we there, is this a turning moment for the whole public sector community? Yeah, we're, so we're absolutely seeing that in Inquisit. In fact, Inquisit, uh, one of the things I like most about Inquisit is it is focused exclusively on the public sector. So our background is in education. If uh, you know, a student is graduating from high school now and applying to one of the many colleges and universities, they use the Common Application. Uh, we worked with the Common App to help build that uh, system that graduating students can apply to multiple universities as opposed to when I was a graduating high school student, I had to fill out the form, send in a check, wait for it to come back in the mail. Now that's all done online, you can apply to multiple colleges at the same time. So I look at that as one of the first innovations that happened in the public sector on AWS. Inquisit was a part of it. It was one of the things that uh, attracted me to Inquisit. Um, but the innovations, that was in 2009, 2010. Um, it was the beginning. We are just hitting that hockey stick that Andy has talked about in public sector where you know, the federal business, um, you know, he talked a little bit about the uh, Intel business and how when the agency moved on to AWS, it really validated security. I think we've seen the government go in, I think we've seen education and nonprofits. So I think this is the time that public sector is really going to take off in the cloud. Talk about the company that you're leading as the chief now and the product, as you mentioned the Common App. You talk about the Common App that my high school graduates had to fill out okay. and hit send. Okay. Is that, is that it? That's it, okay. that's it. So yeah. I got some issues with this thing. So, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we'll really. do a follow up after Well, first of all, it's it. definitely <laughs> un, um, undifferentiated heavy lifting when filling out applications. Automating is great. Yes. Um, but it, it increases the more schools you can apply to, so it creates more inbound applications to schools. It does. I'm sure there's some challenges there that's on the horizon with you guys are solving. Now, that creates more, I won't say spam, because it's legit, but a lot of schools are like, people throwing in 17 applications now. Yeah. 20 applications. Well, and it's all automated. I mean, technology, so yes, there's more automation, but there's more background, there's more data, and these Take are data, database decisions. So sure, well let me start with uh, Inquisit. You asked about Inquisit, 2002 Inquisit started, and uh, doing application development. It was in 2009 that we really saw the light to move to AWS, and it was through the work that we were doing with the Common App that we realized the scale of handling all these applications. The, the paper-based way isn't any easier. Yeah, In fact, yeah. it really yeah. restricts the number of colleges that students can apply and it restricts the number of applicants that colleges get. So with more students applying to more universities and universities receiving more applications, they can be really selective. They have more data sources, more information about the, the people they're going to bring on and have a very inclusive and representative university. We have, um, 
um, students applying from China and Europe to United States universities. So we're getting a lot of diversity and I think you know, there, there's probably a little bit more volume, but that's what technology I mean, the data is great. Help. First of all, it's digital data, so that's one, I appreciate that. Yeah. But there's got to be more automation machine learning going in because now you have a relationship with a student and a school. What, what's next, what happens next? Well, it, it, so the sky's the limit, and um, you, you can do, once you've got data, so data reporting is basically uh, limited by the quality of the input data. So you have more students applying with more background information, and you can get really personal. So we helped a, a large um, Ivy League university in the Northeast migrate all into AWS. And this was after uh, we worked with the Common App to build the Common Application. Uh, we helped this university migrate all into AWS and we realized that there were benefits and challenges along the way. Some of the challenges we saw were repeatable. So we built a proprietary product called SkyMap and what SkyMap does is it helps the full migration. So it integrates with your discovery applications like a risk network, it integrates with AWS Cloud Endure and we were working with Cloud Endure before AWS acquired them. So we have APIs there, it manages the whole migration and your, your question was, you get all this information about an organization's infrastructure, what do you do with it? Well, you use the next step is AIML. So we've used some of the higher level services that, AI, that uh, Amazon Web Services has with artificial intelligence. We were using Lambda, serverless, and uh, we, we could go there because I think that's a, an well, interesting Well, you got Ken feature. over there at AWS Educate. Oh yeah. You know, that'd be You're great, just... get a common app over there. <laughs> well, AWS University, coming soon. I, I would, I, did he mention that? I saw he was on no, the no, show no. before. I'm kind of just uh, riffing on okay. that, but Amazon he's University. got a huge inbound educational thing going on, so education seems to be a big part of the whole themes here. Well, that's our legacy, and we're working with a lot of universities. We're seeing, so you asked where is the, the cloud going in, in the future. Um, we're seeing large universities move all in on AWS because of they're going to get more more flexibility, the yeah. costs are going to go down, they're going to have more information on the students, they're going to be able to provide better learning. When you're talking to your client, this, this big uh, Ivy League in the Northeast, yeah. what are its pain points? Because I mean, college admissions is, is a controversial topic in the United States and it's been, there's been scandal this year. Um, what, when, when you were talking with this company and they said we, we want to do this, but what was the problem they were trying to solve? I mean, what, what, were they, what were their pain points? Well, one of the first pain points is they were located in a major city and their data center was in the major city and this is expensive real estate. And so to use expensive real estate that you for data, you know, for servers, et cetera, for a data center, instead of using it for education, is a cost to the university. So very simply put, moving out of that data center, opening that space up for education, and moving into AWS Cloud, say it gave them more space for education, it uh, helped them with cost avoidance, and you know, we, we had a bunch of lessons learned along the way, so um, we, at the time, could move about five servers uh, a week, which may seem like a good number, but now with the automation that we get through SkyMap, our product, uh, we're working with um, a large uh, group of private universities as well as Wharton University. And with this large group of private universities, we found we can do, on average, over 20. Uh, the best week, we had 37 uh, servers migrate. Wow. Higher ed, obviously, they like to be on the cutting edge, but still, they're public sector. Where's the modernization progress on that? Because now you're on, you've been on both sides of the table. You were at Amazon Web Services, now you're leading as the CEO of this company in higher ed. How's that modernization going? What's your perspective? What's your observation around Sure, so uh, you know, first of all, um, I had the opportunity to go work at, with a university that's local here uh, last week, and what I love seeing is with this access to the cloud, you've got everyone in the university now has access to nearly unlimited resources for education. They were staffing their own IT help desk with their students, and I love seeing that kind of experience being brought from you know, someone who used to be an IT professional is now being brought down to a student because of these new technologies are so readily accessible to everybody. So, so, what, so tell us some other things that you're seeing, that you're hearing, that are, that are exciting innovations to you in, the, in this sector. 
Yeah, well, um, another opportunity that we're working with is uh, we worked with the Small Business Administration and that was pretty rewarding for us as a small business. And three of the applications that we worked on there were, so we are a small 8A and it used to take uh, our founder, um, TC Ratnapuri, about two months uh, and we had to hire an outside consultant to apply for our small business accreditation. So he was doing the paperwork and all the, you know, the old school application certification. After we built this application with the Small Business Administration, it took him several hours. He did it by himself. We applied, got the accreditation. <laughs> so these modernizations are happening both in universities as well as in the federal government. So what's your business plan? You're the CEO now. What's the company's plan? What's your goals? So, there's so many things I could talk about. I'll talk about one or two. We see in the next three to five years in public sector that these organizations are going to migrate all in on the cloud. And so we're building up a group, and that's what SkyMap is, is mainly addressing, is we want to make sure that organizations are able to orchestrate their move to the cloud, and we're using, we're going to start exposing the tool that we use for our own internal uh, resources. We're going to start exposing that, leaving that with universities and the federal government, and anyone else who's willing to use it to help them get all in on the cloud. Then we think there's probably going to be a wave where they're trying to um, learn the cloud and how to operate it. We'll help them as a, a managed service provider. And then where I'm excited is you go to serverless. And I mentioned we're already using Lambda for our, our SkyMap product, but we see in the future after the MSP that organizations are going to be serverless and they'll be running in a no-ops environment. So this is a classic example of sometimes you, your business evolves in areas you don't know based on yeah. the wave you're on. You guys were very proficient at migrating. We are. Now you got SkyMap, which is you're going to take that, those learnings and, and pay, pay it forward, bring, bring it to the market. Bring them out to the market, so absolutely. So people don't have to do that themselves, buy, build kind of thing. Well, and it's a little bit like you're doing here, John, and, and what <laughs> AWS has don't done. Don't tell anyone. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm only kidding. Yep. Tell everybody. Strike that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like AWS did. AWS yep. started as a, a way for Amazon to manage their internal servers, and you know, eventually they realized everyone else in the market can use these same innovations that, uh, that they've got. And well, I think this proves the point that if you have a SaaS-based model with open APIs, you can offer and pretty much anything as a service, if you get the speed and agility equation right, someone might say, why should it's not a core company, why should I buy, I'll just use that service. I hope so. That's the SaaS <laughs> model, right? I hope I mean, so, yeah. And, oh, sorry. No, I was going to say, you, you were on the inside, now you're on the outside at this conference. What are your impressions? What, are you, what kinds of conversations are you having that you are going to take back to Inquisit and say, hey, I learned this at the summit, or these people over here are working on something cool, we got to get this in here. Yeah, well, it's been really fun for me as a change of perspective. For the last seven years, I've been helping plan and organize the event and make sure it goes <laughs> off, and yeah. this time I'm a guest, yeah, you know, I'm a visitor. <laughs> so I know, if I look a little bit more relaxed, than last year is because uh, you know I'm a guest now, um, but the takeaways are really you know the innovation is continuing at, at AWS and and you know as a uh, a partner of Amazon Web Services I've got to make sure that my team and I stay up to date with all of the services that are being released and simplify those. And like John was asking earlier, you know, make sure that there's a strategy for migration support and then continuing to refactor what they're doing. Well congratulations on the new job. Um, you got a great tailwind with cloud growth, adoption, just in the early days, public sector continuing to astonish the, the numbers. Next year will be 18,000, 20,000 people. I love Soon it. Soon it's like reinvent size, we're only 30,000 people. Uh, this is huge, yeah. <laughs> now it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. I'm sure you guys are enjoying it as great. well. Yeah, no, it's been great. Doug, thanks so much for returning to theCUBE. Now you're a two-time alum. I know, I, love it. I know, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for John Furrier. We will have more from the Amazon uh, AWS Public Sector Summit coming up in just a little bit.